Um, hopefully all the parents and athletes have a seat, the staff don't mind standing, they normally stand on a Tuesday night. Um, we really appreciate people coming out, we don't want to make this long, um, we know we sent you a lot of details when you first applied for the trip, um, a lot of details about the facility, about what will be going on and we'll continue to communicate. There's just a few things that we do want to get across and we want to make sure that you know who you're going to be travelling with in terms of the staff and what our roles are and we also want to make sure that you know your responsibilities um, in terms of your conduct and that you're going to sign your code of conduct with your guardian here present and then we'll adhere to those as we go through. So some of the things that we're just going to touch upon tonight, just our philosophy behind Youth Academy, because I appreciate we don't often all get in the same room. Um, some of you are quite new for, for just this last term. Um, so we'll go through what's the philosophy for Youth Academy, where has it emerged from um, and what are our development plans for it and what the aims are. We'll talk about why we choose to, to invest this money in warm weather training and why specifically we choose, we choose to invest it in you guys. Um, we want to exchange information about our flights, our transfers, our baggage and all of that. Um, we'll look at just asking for any information around your health and injury status and make sure that you feel that you can feed that back appropriately um, after today's meeting and that can go to our therapists that are going to travel with us. We'll look at, and hopefully you've done this, so Alistair and Luke have been doing the administration as we come in. Um, so we want to make sure that we have the WhatsApp uh, number that you're going to be using whilst you're on camp, because that's how we'll communicate with the athletes. Um, so hopefully the number that you share should be the, the travelling athletes number, um, and we'll use WhatsApp groups to determine the times of daily meetings, meal times, all that type of thing. Um, you should have also left a copy of your travel insurance policy. The reason we ask you to have your own is just so that if any of your baggage would go missing or you smash your iPad or whatever it might be, that you have some personal accountability for that as well or you need to go to the dentist, something like that. It's better to have a personal policy. Um, so hopefully you've left a copy of that. If you haven't, we can still chase these things up. But you can see with the number of people in the room, as slick as we can make things, the, the better. And that'll, that'll speed things up. Um, we'll introduce all the staff so you feel comfortable if you haven't met certain people. We're taking some additional physical prep staff we're taking eight or nine personal coaches. We've got an osteopath, a physio, a welfare officer. We're taking a logistics coordinator. So in total, there are going to be 50 of us traveling. Um, and particularly with the staff, we want, we want to be able to identify them tonight and they can put, them, put their hands up and introduce themselves. Um, we'll sign that. We'll have a quick look at the code of conduct and the key statements in that, and we'll sign those tonight. We will also then just speak to the athletes who are 18 or older, or who will be 18 or older. We'll speak to you in the boardroom just at half nine, just for a quick chat. Obviously, there's a, there's a few different expectations. Those that are 18 or more are travelling, I think, are returning. So you've had the opportunity to travel maybe in 2016, and we're now funding you through a bursary to travel again. So our expectations of you guys are certainly high as role models and around all of the, all of the things that you could bring to this trip as an adult. Okay. Um, so we'll talk specifically about your conduct as well. Um, we'll also then just ask the, the staff and personal coaches if you can just spend 10 minutes with us at the end and we can share just how we're going to get all the training plans together and how we'll communicate as a group. Um, we'll also talk about car hire and those types of things as well. So um, hopefully we can get through it quicker than that. We'll see how it goes. So just around the philosophy for Youth Academy. So we obviously established it in 2014 and it's been, been growing. Um, I think. For, for this year, we've had a youth academy based here at the University of Ulster as well as now uh, Dean leading on the academy at Coleraine. So we look after about uh, 30 athletes in total. And the idea is really, it's not to replace any of your technical coaching or to take away from what you do with your club. But what we're trying to do is to expose you to physical preparation uh, methods and to some performance behaviours and lifestyle behaviours that will hopefully allow you to maximise what you're doing with your technical training and accelerate you uh, hopefully to senior success. So we're focused on your long-term development and setting you up for what you can do as a senior. Um, so we're delivering a physical prep curriculum. You know that, and a lot of you have been here for that on a Tuesday night. We deliver some of our education sessions, and really what we want at this stage from you is to display the behaviours of a, of a progressing um, senior performance athlete and to become a robust athlete that can handle your training well and that can tolerate all the loads and all the stresses that you'll put your body under. And we focus a lot on movement competency. So through this trip, all of those themes will continue, uh, but hopefully through intensifying that and putting you around the formal support uh, for the duration of two weeks, it hopefully accelerates your progress a little bit more okay, and gives you that time with your personal coach if they're traveling as well. 
So Tom's just going to talk to us a bit more specifically about what the aims of the Youth Academy are, so you can be really clear on why you've been selected for it and what we what we hope for your future. So yeah, our our primary aim is increase the retention of Northern Ireland's best age group athletes into the senior ranks. Um, so we'll try and accelerate uh, performances at that age group level, but ultimately it's all about performance as a senior athlete and progression to that. Um, and we think key to that is developing their required physical competencies, competencies uh, fundamental movement skills and performance behaviours, which will be uh, a big part of this, this training trip as well, um, to allow them to engage in senior performance training. So this should set you up for future senior performance camps, whether that's five or ten years down the, uh, down the line. Um, and whether you are in three, four, five years going to head off to university, it could be anywhere in the world, any environment in the world, we want you to have the skills to be able to flourish in that environment. Um, and so much of that is about your training experience, and how you move uh, in different scenarios and what you can cope with uh, mentally and emotionally as well. Um, we aim to improve coaches' understanding of long-term athletic development and physical preparation. Again, for the same reason, everything comes back to that top line. Um, everything's aimed at, at, at doing that. Um, we want to increase representation on British and Irish under 20, uh, 18, 20 and 23 teams for major champs because that will help senior success and get that competition major championship experience that will help you as a senior, hopefully, in future Commonwealth Games teams. Um, yeah, future Commonwealth Games teams, a huge, huge part of it, and that's you know one way we really measure the success. Hopefully, uh, every four years we have a little bit more success and a bit more, um, a few more athletes that have come through the youth academy on those teams. Maybe one day uh, the entire team will have come through the youth academy. That could be a nice thing one day. Uh, and we want to support Youth Academy coaches to progress on our coaching pathway um, and try and aim to have the full British Athletics coach qualification uh, within 12 months of the programme. Um, they can also further develop by get, going to the next level of, of British Athletics qualifications, the event group, uh, and potentially move into SSC qualifications uh, like the UK SCA workshops. So some of the success of the four years, five years now, of the Youth Academy. Um, you can see some of those pictures. Eve's in the room. Uh, Jack Agnew had double uh, gold success at the World Power Championships two years ago. Um, we had two Commonwealth Youth Games gold medalists, uh, Summer and Aaron Sexton, who isn't pictured, in 2017 as well. Uh, last year, uh, exactly a year ago from now, we had three uh, teenage youth academy athletes on the Commonwealth Games senior team. Um, Summer Lecky, Kate O'Connor and Jack Agney, all pictured there. Um, in the last four years, there have been 12 Northern Ireland under 20 records broken. I think that's quite a good measure of the effect of, of getting good athletes training together, training in the right way, uh, physical competency. Um, and, and, and personal coaches as well, um, moving along that coaching pathway. So trends now show that Youth Academy graduates progressing towards the Commonwealth Potential Programme, um, with several moving to UK universities for specialist support and progressing uh, through that system as well. So it's not only while you're here uh, in, in the Youth Academy progress, we want you to progress as a senior, whether that's here, uh, universities, UK or further afield. I think just a point um, on, on that one is that we want to use this trip to be able to talk about some of those future opportunities for you. So we'll speak a little bit about university preparation and we'll also speak about what the Commonwealth Potential Programme looks like if you accelerate and you progress onto that um, and what the support would look like. So we want to try and fill you in on what the next step of the pathway is when we have this time and this experience in Portugal because we don't always have the time together to do these things so we'll be we'll be putting in some of that education as well. And the final uh, success we've had is that the Youth Academy was recognised as an example of best practice in sport education and training 
uh, in the European Union in 2018. Laura, you might know a bit more about that. Now. Yeah, so that was just after our, our last experience, which did it did go well. I think 95% of the athletes came back and achieved a PB in that season. Um, I think certainly Summer and Aaron, who were out there, went on to those gold medals. And I think just because of some of the education, whenever the EU assessed their investment, their finding was that was you know our academy is an example of best practice. But that that puts pressure on us. Okay, it puts pressure really on us as as staff and as project managers to go out and execute this really well because our, our level of funding was increased um, because of a successful experience. Um, on that previous trip in 2017, we've applied again for 2020 and 2021. Um, and for that to be successful, it relies on all of you committing to your codes of conduct, coming back, staying in the sport, progressing, hopefully being retained in the sport and giving something back to the sport with your performances as well. Um, so there's pressure on all of us to do this right. This is probably the biggest funding stream we've ever had externally come into our sport. Um, so this is about executing it really as best we can. Just a little bit, I'll not, I'll not labour this, but this is just for, for you guys to know uh, kind of where the, where the funding and stuff has come from. So it's come from Erasmus, you might have heard of Erasmus in tertiary education as well. Um, students can go on Erasmus when they're um, on their placement year at university and things. Um, you can do exchange projects for Erasmus, so that's what's where the pot of funding has come from. It's primarily around education, youth and sport. Um, there's a focus on international mobility or exchange and there's a focus on apprenticeships and for the purposes of this program you guys are all seen as apprentices because we talk about you as following a dual career pathway so students and athletes and combining that um, so we're appreciating that no one in the room is a professional athlete or a full-time apprentice athlete um, but you're certainly in vocational training as an athlete um, and you commit enough time in that to be seen as, as an apprentice athlete as well as dual career at university so that's how we're able to, to get the funding we took 24 athletes and six coaches to Portugal in 2017. The main uh, purpose of that, uh, the, the key kind of headlines over the program were developing elite athletic skills um, to maximize your uh, personal and professional development and to gain cultural awareness. So to be around all those other athletes. So Alpha Mar for the last 20 years has been a hub um, for, for German and for, uh, for athletes from really all over Europe. A lot of the home countries use it as a training base and you'll certainly come into contact with a lot of other youth academies, um, Scandinavian countries, Finland, Sweden and all of those. Um, so that, that's really why Erasmus, that's why Erasmus provides the funding. Um, so we're, we're repeating again what we did with a slightly increased funding, which is why there are 50 people in the room. And we do have those plans in for 2020 and 2021. And interestingly, they'll be assessed in the, the weeks we are travelling. So just around your social media and stuff, if you could really do us a favour and just keep it positive and show it in a good light, because that is the very week where people will be scrutinising who we are and what we do and whether we deserve enhanced funding for the next two years. Um, so that, that is Erasmus and what they do, and hopefully we'll see how Brexit affects that, um, but it's good that we've had our application in, in advance of, of that actually happening. So just a bit of, of rationale of, of why we choose to invest in warm weather training um, and what physiologically you can expect to happen um, through warm weather training. I think Tom, that's you. Yeah, so it's a really good opportunity to get out and do what we're focusing in on, which is focusing on speed development, and that's whether you're a 60 meter runner or we're talking about the running mechanics required to be a world-class marathon runner. Um, doesn't just mean you're going to sprint fast, it's about working on the generic skills that work across the different event groups. Um, you can have a real focus on S&C and athlete education, and that athlete education is really important in terms of performance behaviours that will help you go on to get that PB at the major championships, um, to be able to focus in on your training throughout your university career or whatever else, work, your, your work career that will come later in your most important years. Um, it's a, an excellent facility, single site facility with the hotel and the track all on the same complex um, and generally speaking the climate is excellent. Um, you will perform better in the heat, training and competition, as long as you manage that and again managing the heat is another thing that will we will focus on out there and that will serve you well in future competitions as many athletes in the room know from whether it's Australia um, or Dubai or wherever else you will get some really hot places and it's a 
a skill to be able to adapt to that and get the best out of yourself. Um, and where possible then with personal coaches, some of the personal coaches traveling as well, that's a really good chance for, for the coach to help um, the athlete understand all of those things and for, for the coaches themselves to learn something about these training camps as well. Um, yeah, we have chosen to invest in athletes that we believe have the potential to track towards future Commonwealth Games teams. That's kind of our, our rationale behind it. And the message at the bottom, I suppose, is a bit of a, a, bit of a cultural message. Um, don't see this as a reward for you doing really well last year. Um, if you get selected for future major championships, it's not a reward. It's not just, oh great, I've, I've been selected, I'll go out and have fun. Of course, that's a really big part of it. Um, but see it as an investment. People believe in you and people want you to do your best. So, uh, you want to have fun, but you want to take it seriously as well. So we see this as an investment in your future potential in sport and the fact you've dedicated yourself to sport. Um, so I think we're all trying to change mindsets a little bit around around that kind of area and that's from a staff perspective, from a coach's perspective and we hope that athletes will, will see it that way as well. So in those terms it's, it's not time to think or get on the plane and great job's done, I've got my reward, free ticket, actually get on the plane and the work starts now, the, the work in terms of preparing yourself for future camps but also for the best camp we can have to hopefully then see the PBs come in, in the summer. So if we do it properly we're expecting athlete progression and we're expecting everybody on an upward trajectory for the rest of the summer. Um, so the work does start once we actually get there. Yeah, I think we're willing to hold ourselves to that you know, as, as team managers when we take teams away. Um, maybe previously, years past, there's maybe that culture of, oh, great, I get a trip to the other side of the world, can't wait to enjoy myself, but um, we're trying to be very professional, as professional as we can be, to get the best for the athletes, and so hopefully the athletes will be able to do the best for themselves as well. Really simple slide just around who we're taking. So 24 new Youth Academy athletes who would have entered the, the Youth Academy um, for 2018. Um, a couple of people have actually stepped up from Speed Power Academy and that's been a decision based on, on your progress um, during this year of Speed Power Academy. So you've been able to, to slot in. Um, there are eight returning bursary athletes. That means athletes that have uh, travelled previously and normally Erasmus can't fund them. But what we've been able to do is bring the trip as as much under budget or on budget as we can to allow us to make an investment from Athletics NI towards you. So when I say we do have high expectations, um, it's money that we've chosen to invest um, that, that we didn't have to and that Erasmus haven't asked us to and we're spending that on the bursary athletes. Um, there'll be seven staff uh, from our team, that's through the myself and Tom, the event group coaches, um, like Adam, Amy, um, Alistair in the endurance side, we'll go through all their roles later. Two performance therapists um, who I'll get to, to introduce themselves a bit later because we've got a slide on therapy and then nine personal coaches in total. Um, so that, that's the breakdown of it. Um, just for your information at the same time, so the director of athletics who is the most senior person with us, uh, Jackie Newton, she'll be leading a performance camp separately and they're also basing in Alphamore. So you can expect to see Jason Smith and Kerry O'Flaherty and Adam Kirk Smith and all those types of Commonwealth Games athletes there um, in the facility. That says something of the quality of the facility. Um, they'll, they'll not be on the same training regime as us. They'll not be in the same meetings as us. They will be in a separate camp, um, but, but they will be there. Um, and obviously Jackie will be there and as our, um, I guess, authority and line manager in work, we'll be, for that reason, also trying to keep it the best and most professional camp we can. Um, and the second week, uh, Dean will be leading at University of Ulster uh, camp for, for one week as well. So there's a <coughs> six or eight university athletes who travel out for I think, six or seven nights um, and Dean will manage that. Bit of the physiology then um, and just, just the benefits that you can expect and why it is, it is preferable to train in warm weather conditions when, when possible. Yes, sir. Many of you will find that maybe your PBs from last year might have been on a nice, hot, sunny day, especially if you're a speed power athlete. Um, your muscles will work at their biomechanical best in nice, warm climates, as long as you're hydrated and everything else being equal. Um, you will run faster in, in that kind of heat. Um, so that really allows you to <coughs> focus on the top line there we're talking about really focus on your quality training, but to do that effectively, you need to get your proper sleep in, do the recovery, 
Um, and I suppose that's the benefit of having a training camp, is that there are less distractions. I'm sure most of you will have study to do with you. But besides your studying and your training, all you got to do is eat and sleep. So that's, that's a positive. And even on your travel time, you know, some people are traveling an hour 15 or an hour 30 to actually get here to do these sessions or to get to Dean and Coleraine. So once you start taking that out and you arrive at training that much fresher because you're on that single site, that's where some of the benefits will come as well. Yeah, we talked about those physiological adaptions. Um, well, this is a study that tells you that in five days of exposure to heat, you can acclimatize or acclimate. Um, a lot of the high performance athletes would go in a heat chamber, building up to competitions abroad, um, and you will actually make some physiolo physiological adaptions within the first five days that will help you train in the heat as well. Um, there'll be top class athletes um, at various different levels. There'll be some international development squads out there from other countries as well, and being able to see what those athletes do versus what you do. A lot of it might be quite similar, there might be a few differences, but there's a, some good interactions there that, that can happen. Um, and you can take some of that experience, just like being at a major championship and you'll be looking at what the, the world junior champion is doing. A lot of it might be really good, some of it might be quite similar to what you do, some of it actually might be rubbish. The better athlete doesn't necessarily mean their training's better. Um, so it can be a bit of an eye-opener in that sense. And yeah, really, from our perspective, a really good opportunity for athlete education, um, being able to cope with the heat, those recovery methods, and just the simple things of good nutrition, um, managing self-therapy, and some of the, the, the osteo and physio might be able to help us with that one um, as well. So with the potential benefits, you also get some potential um, pitfalls. So optimal training conditions, being able to run fast every session, increases your risk of injury if you're not careful um, and possibly neural fatigue as well so neural fatigue is probably mainly for speed and power athletes um, if your PB currently is 11 seconds flat for the 100 it's possible you could go out in a training session and run quicker than that even in a training session because of the heat and the potentially fast track so that means there's an increased need of recovery um, but with the coaching team we have out here um, they'll be able to keep a close eye on whether those things might be happening and if needs be, if you do a really fast session on a Monday, then it might be that you might not run fast again until Thursday or Friday. You'll do more recovery and more gym type work. Um, there's always a temptation to train like a full-time senior athlete when you've got full-time um, training possibilities available to you, but that might not be right for you. In fact, it won't be right for most of you. Um, just because you're there full time doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to do two sessions a day every day. Um, that's a trap that many, many, many athletes fall into and often either go backwards in terms of performance or get injured. Um, so largely speaking, you will do the same kind of training that you always do, not a great deal more. There might be some little bits and pieces around a bit more extra core work or a bit more flexibility work. Uh, but in terms of your hours per week of training, it's not going to change hugely. Um, there's also when you've got a hotel and you have a half board there's potential for change in eating habits we see this in um, Olympic and Commonwealth Games villages where you can eat 24-7 as much as you want and of course the coaches take full advantage of that but the athletes need to stick within their normal eating habits so that will be a challenge for you all as well but we'll be able to help and assist with that um, nothing too out of the ordinary and then there's also the danger of sunburn, dehydration, um, which is just part of that preparation and self-management on, on a camp. And again, we will, we're there to help, but it's good to start thinking about these things now. So just in terms of our uh, roles, so for the purpose of this trip, I'll project manage everything. Um, so that means any queries that you might have around flights, baggage, hotels, personnel, if your staff around your own management, um, anything like that really can come to me. The chances are I might offload it to Luke or Catherine who are helping me on logistics, uh, but I'm certainly able to take all those queries. I think I have my email address. So out there, I well, my, my normal role in work is coach development and physical prep lead, but out there I'll lead the throw script, so javelin and shot. Um, and I'll also have SNC roles with the 400 meter group, the middle distance group, and then be supporting uh, the multis as normal. 
Tom then will be the head coach for the purpose of this trip. So any training queries, we're going to distribute the training templates so that personal coaches can feed into what's their normal training philosophy, um, how do things work at home, what are the key sessions that they would like their athletes to do. Um, and we'll, as much as possible, we'll put those on templates. We'll make sure that the athletes can still work in appropriate groups, um, but that the, the, their own coach does get, um, does get a good say in what's happening out there. So for all the training queries, Tom will be the head coach and he'll certainly facilitate our evening staff meetings that we'll have out there to make sure that everyone's plan is appropriate for the next day and the integration of that plan. Our central kind of staff, um, two event group coaches first of all, so Adam uh, works for us, um, he's obviously never everybody active coach but aside from that he, he works hard on event group for sprints and jumps. Um, so Adam and then Amy will be out as event group speed as well, sprints, um, but also supporting heavily on the physical prep side. Um, so Adam's here, Amy, I think most of you know if you're new athletes, maybe you don't. Um, both Adam and Amy were Commonwealth Games athletes out with us in Australia um, just last year. Um, then Alistair Woods is here. We don't see Alistair as much at the, at the academy, but Alistair is our endurance uh, kind of event group um, officer. And he's also the welfare officer, so he is travelling with us. A welfare officer is his professional role. So in terms of any, we'll talk about it later, but in terms of any issues you might have around another teammate or around an issue with a coach or something that you want to speak really confidentially about or that a parent would like to speak about, Alistair would be your main point of contact. Of course you can talk to anyone, um, but Alistair's well trained in, in all those types of issues and confidentiality. Uh, Lewis then, you'll know centrally, is, is based here with us. Uh, Lewis is one of our casual coaches, but he supports support specifically on the physical prep side. Um, helps us a lot with the gymnastics around pole vault and gymnastics for throws, and he'll be out there uh, supervising a number of the, the gym-based sessions for us. Uh, next up is our performance therapy. Before we introduce uh, the two people, just a bit around our philosophy for performance therapy because it's maybe a different term for you and it's a term we're trying to get more towards using rather than physiotherapy or injury treatment. Um, so we're thinking of performance therapists as part of a multidisciplinary team that supports the athlete really. Um, we're thinking that we need to have for that to happen, we need to have a really good communication loop. So I think where we could have improved our trip um, from two years ago, perhaps we were guilty of putting up a sheet at the end of the night and said, okay, here's 12 appointments, put your name down, I think you need one. <coughs> And the communication loop with the, the coach was never really there. So what we need to happen is a really good kind of feedback from an athlete to their coach about what they think their needs with a therapist might be. Uh, what's arisen and why? Or is it something you've brought from home? Or how could your performance be enhanced by actually seeing someone, whether that's around recovery or screening or whatever it might be. Um, and then we'll open up that communication and the coach will bring that to our evening meeting and we'll go forward from that evening coach's meeting to then set up a therapy schedule and appointments for the next day. Um, so that's how we want it to work. We want to deal with healthy athletes and we want to think about enhancing the performance of those healthy athletes to get even more from themselves and more from their session. Of course they'll be there to treat any emergencies or injuries that might come up, um, but we don't, we, we're, not, we're not planning for that as much as we're planning for these small inputs, small bits of, of prehab or rehab um, or screenings that might assist you in the future. Um, so trying to get, get into a way of working around that. Um, so the two people we've recruited then are William Wood, um, who's an osteopath by qualifications, and Evan Burke, who's a qualified physiotherapist. Um, would you, do you two just want to mention kind of wh where you're based, just at, at the moment, um, just so people... Yeah, so um, I'm a physiotherapist, I'm working in Lisbon, and I have a history of working with Division 1 women's basketball and in football down the side as well. I'm currently doing a master's here in sports and exercise medicine, and I suppose, similar to what you were saying, Laura, just as home service, we want to sort of complement what the coaches are doing, maybe give you guys the tools to really manage your bodies and sort of the load you're putting through and especially put emphasis on your recovery and different things like that as well. So help you be more robust as an athlete and sort of less likely to need physios in the future. And Will? Uh, I reckon Nick down in Newcastle. Um, as you guys said already, our, our kind of main focus this trip is, yes, keeping all the athletes healthy and keeping them training at the same time, focus on trying to get as much out of them physically as we can. As well. yeah. It's not just health, it's performance as well. Okay, so um, the guys will introduce themselves more and become more and more integrated into our camp. When Will says Newcastle he means County Down, so even though he's got an English accent, uh, we wanted to recruit therapists that, you know, if you needed to and if you wanted to, you could have some link to um, in the future within Northern Ireland and that potentially are available that we could link into again around defence. And that seemed to work last year. We were able to bring 
um, some of our therapists back to NI Champs and to Belfast International and those types of things once your relationships are established. Um, so we'll get to know them as we go. Just around uh, utilising, I think I've said most of, most of this, so this is just how we might utilise it. Um, the loop between coach, athlete, therapist, um, don't deviate too much from normal, okay? So if you don't, if you don't normally go and ask for a flush out after your hardest track session, don't, don't start to do that because something might change, okay? Um, or yeah, if, if you're feeling healthy and you just say, oh, I've never been to the physio before, I'll give that a shot, maybe you actually don't need to. Okay, if the coach says you're moving well. Um, so, so try to have a rationale for everything that you do. That's Adam getting some trackside therapy. Um, you've never seen that picture before? I'm looking at my phone beneath there. <laughs> uh, that's in Tenerife. Yeah, that is kind of, so what you see there is some trackside work. So, so some of our more, our older athletes, particularly the bursary athletes, this idea of trackside intervention, we do want to try and use that. Um, and what we're going to think about is if there's small interventions that a therapist can make through your warm-up, perhaps helping you to mobilise something, to open something up, manipulate something maybe, um, and then to see how, how that can improve and increase through the warm-up. So we will work with this idea of trackside intervention. We'll also have uh, private sort of therapy appointments available in a private place in the hotel so for anything that might be a longer treatment or, or a screening as such, something that you maybe need to work on independently as well. Just around logistics, Catherine Ashford's not here, um, but in terms of communicating with you about certainly some of those bursary athletes that are travelling out of Belfast and not on the main flights, um, she will be coordinating all your kind of transfers, pickups, uh, some of your luggage, those types of things. So you can expect to hear from her. Uh, she's going to be an admin on our WhatsApp group, and we have those meetings at night. She'll be the one that might be getting in touch to remind you that actually you've got a therapy appointment coming up or you're five minutes late for a meeting, those types of things. Uh, she'll also be keeping a close eye on all of our social media. Um, she'll be doing some positive stuff from our perspective, but she'll also be keeping a bit of an eye on yours. And that's the idea. It is, don't feel like you're being stalked, but social media, once it's out there, it's out there. So our, our team has, have every right to keep a close eye on, on what's going out into the public domain as well. Um, personal coaches then, um, you can put your hand up if you're in the room. So Michael Roberts on sprints is, is Rachel McCann's coach and also works with Eve a little bit. Uh, Jim O'Neill, Jim here, yeah. Um, Jim Alexander is going to be out with us and working mostly on pole vault and with the multi-eventers. Alan Kennedy has a jumps group. Um, Michelle Ray has some jumpers as well. Uh, Michael Curran is going to assist us with combined events. Uh, Lynn Fisher is going to be doing sprints and also our clean sport athlete education and anti-doping. She does know that, that's good. <laughs> that was going to be a surprise. Uh, Francis Marsh is week two supporting Alistair with endurance and then Philip Tweedy is week one also supporting Alistair with endurance. So hopefully we haven't missed anyone but the main thing about the group of coaches there a range of backgrounds, males, females, we've got people who are from professional medical backgrounds, professional business backgrounds, um, engineering, so a really skilled group of people in their own walks of life as well as dedicating time as a personal coach. Just around athlete education, this will kind of roll out when we get there and we'll get our schedule set up, um, but some of the stuff we, we think we can help get, get information across to you on Irish and British pathways and preparing for international competitions. Um, some of you won't have had to express your interest, let's say, for, through Athletics Ireland, for example. Um, there are certain things that need to be done in terms of uploading passport information, actually expressing interest for a championship. So we've had athletes that have missed championships with Ireland because they simply didn't express that they were interest, interested in going. But knowing where that information is, knowing where the selection policy is, being able to read the policy and submit everything in a timely fashion, we want to try and give you that information up front so we don't see people. We have also people who simply don't... They want to go for Ireland and they're about to get picked for Ireland on a relay team, let's say, but they don't have an Irish passport. We want to make sure those types of simple mistakes do not hold us back. So we'll get that information across to you. Um, clean sport with Lynn. Strength diagnostics. You know that we do force platform testing here. We monitor uh, force produced and elastic strength on the platforms. We want to make sure that you actually understand what we're doing with that, um, understand the different measures. So we'll do a very quick, it'll be a snapshot. 10 to 15 minutes of what it is, why we do it. So that the next time you jump on there, you're fully kind of bought into to what that's for. We'll look some, some of the girls will look specifically around female athlete health, um, and we will look around performance behaviors, just around sleep, diet, lifestyle. Um, the guys who are sprints coach, this won't, won't be long, but they will probably take 10 or 15 minutes aside away from the track to make sure that you're fully understanding of 
what it really means to accelerate and what upright running and max velocity running looks like and they might be able to help you with some uh, sort of slow motion video analysis to demonstrate that. Um, and then just whilst we have the benefit of Dean out joining us, um, he's just going to talk to us a bit about the University of Ulster, um, about scholarships available and elite athlete entry. And of course that's optional if people want to hear it, but when we have Dean there and we have the time, if there are people 16, 17 thinking about their options, you may as well, you may as well hear from him whilst you're there. Codes of conduct then, so I think they've been passed out um, and the idea is at the end of this uh, meeting is that you can spend some time just to read through that and to actually sign it if you're comfortable and to leave it here. No one will travel without having this signed so it probably is in your interest to, to sign it, it's in our interest to collect it tonight. Um, we'd rather not have to chase people but we'll give you that chance at the end. Tom, do you just want to go through a couple of yeah, so brief the, headlines? The main, the main points to note are that a serious breach of this, a breach, you know, a breach of this that is quite serious, will jeopardise your position um, on future international teams, potentially on the trip itself. Um, that could mean a ban from competition. It could mean travel termination of your trip and basically being sent home. So, you know, it is it is serious. So, so read it, take it seriously. Um, as with senior athletics and I training camps, this will be dry camp, no alcohol. So that's a new policy we've had in for the last year. Um, so even the senior athletes won't be drinking alcohol, even though they're well within their rights to. Um, it's doesn't you know it's not not a no performance benefit whatsoever. So there's not there's no reason not to you know, just give it up for two weeks. From my perspective, being in charge of this funding, I would just say it's a complete contradiction to think that you're going to go on a, a camp to develop your athletic skills, but that there's going to be any rationale or need for alcohol on that camp, and that we would endorse that or allow that to happen. Um, it, it absolutely won't. And I'll very much reserve the right to, to send people home. Also, another headline: being in the bedroom of an athlete of the opposite gender is explicitly banned for under 18s. Um, and actually, we would just ask athletes to remain in their own rooms only. So um, it's just much, much easier if we if we stick with that and do it that way. Um, guys, just remember, you're <coughs> sharing with others. That's as much around the privacy of your roommate. So your roommate's going to have their computer, their laptop, their passport, their money. You don't really have any right to invite anyone else, be it from another country or from our own country, into that room where all of their belongings are and where they might want to nap, sleep, study. Um, so from a personal respect for your roommate um, is, is one of the biggest reasons behind that. And this is the same message all the way up to Commonwealth Games level and beyond. We say the exact same thing. Um, it's, it's part of being an athlete is sharing a room with another athlete. Um, and... In the same way, you don't want to be impacted by inconsiderate roommates. You want to be that good roommate to them as well. Um, so that's something really important going forward. And just around that, there's ample leisure space, indoors, outdoors. There's cafes, there's lounge space. Um, it's, it's not as though you'll be on lockdown and find your own room. There's plenty of places to meet people and we're not discouraging you from social. <coughs> there's a pool table, there's darts, there's a swimming pool. There's all of those things. So you'll not be stuck for social time. We're going to use the same curfew that we used two years ago that was agreed um, by athletes and coaches. Um, on weeknights, uh, we want under-18s in their rooms by 10. Um, Saturday night, that can be 11. And over-18s, we would prefer you to be in your room by 11 as well. Um, if we're going, to be, we're going to be training at 9 a.m. the next morning, you want to be having breakfast by at the latest 8, which probably means you want to be up sometime between 7 and 7.30. Um, so if you're not in your rooms winding down by 11, you're not going to be getting the amount of sleep that an athlete training at high intensity in optimal conditions needs. So that is the, the rationale behind that one. basic statement on social media. Um, it's a good thing. It can be a really good thing. Um, you can use it wisely. Show yourself in a positive light. We know we've got lots of sponsored athletes in Northern Ireland. We can see people that do it well. We've got Kira and New Balance. We've got uh, people that like to thank their coaches. We've got people that uh, tell their story of where they're off competing in the world. It's a positive thing. It can help bring more young people into our sport. Social media is not bad. Um, but make sure you keep it around sharing your personal experience, okay? So you don't have the right to share pictures of others in their bedroom or asleep or out for a swim without their permission. Um, also res respect 
that it is a training camp and so the messages that we want uh, for the public will be those of training and development. Uh, they'll not be around bikini shots at the pool on your holidays. You're effectively, well, you're absolutely not on a holiday. Um, so if we can just keep it in a positive light, we'll have Catherine um, oversee that as much as possible. Travel plans, these have all been sent, we shouldn't have to labour this. The, the key thing to say is the main group of 24, and you, you know who you are, your departure flight is on Friday the 12th, it's at 25 past 5 from Dublin. Um, that was the airline that was able to take a group of that size. Um, so for that we're going to have a transfer leaving from Mary Peters track, um, and that bus we expect will be around 12.45, but we will communicate it. Uh, 12.45 for 1 o'clock departure, we'll probably take a few photos and stuff and do a press release perhaps before people go. Um, for those uh, 24 people and the six coaches that are travelling um, with that, A and I will have and bring your boarding passes. You'll have a 23 kilo bag that you're responsible for yourself. Um, you'll have your backpack. Um, anyone dropping out or failing to provide their passport details now at this stage, we should have all the passport details by 1st of April. Those have to be uploaded for Erasmus and for the airline because we've, we've block booked these 30 flights. If you simply don't pull through on that, we're not. We chased both coaches and athletes last year. If you can't pull through on that, we'll not even ask twice. We'll simply just send you the bill for your flight and we'll replace you with someone else. Um, so 1st of April, passports need to be in date, obviously. You need to have shared expiry dates, nationality, and all of that. Um, and we'll <coughs> upload it all. Uh, we've made arrangements for poles and javelins. So, so Jack McGee will take the javelin uh, bag and we'll try and facilitate that other javelins that need to go. So uh, ideally Gareth, um, and James Wright, if there are other javelins going, we'll try and have those all taped as one kind of package to travel. Um, the poles are going to travel out with Lynn from Belfast and they're going to travel back with Alistair and those guys already know how that's happening. Um, there shouldn't be anything else, but if coaches want specific piece of equipment or athletes, you're responsible for all your personal stuff. If a coach wants, I don't know what it might be, an aqua belt uh, for aqua jogging or Gymnastics rings, if it's something really anomalous and you think it should go in our overall kit bag, let us know, but keep in mind we'll be bringing first aid kit and all that type of stuff so we don't have endless space for lots of little bits. Um, that's the main thing around logistics and travel. We will, uh, just go back there Tom, we'll be arriving in at 25 past um, 8 and there'll be a large coach waiting for us and that'll take us about 30 minutes to Alphamar really. Um, straight in, we'll see if we can get late dinner and then it'll be be bad really, first day's training um, the next day in, in some way. Travel insurance, we've asked you to bring your own policy. It should cover the duration of the trip obviously, um, it should cover your personal uh, belongings and any accident, injury, dental, that type of thing. If you've got an EU health card, bring it because that really helps you out and that helps you um, if you do need to go and see a dentist or a doctor. It's, it's a much speedier process if you have that health card. Um, just around, we all know this, we've all been training on holidays, I'm sure. Effective packing, tag your bags, okay, a lot of us are all Northern Ireland or Ireland, we all have the same types of, of kit bags. Um, tag, tag your own bags so that you don't lose them at the airport. Gels, liquids, whatever in your whole luggage. Uh, we know about the transfer. If you take medication at home for any reason, remember to bring it. Um, sunscreen and after sun. We're not that close, to, you know, there's, there's probably a shop about a kilometre or a mile away, but typically once we're there, we stay there and you can request to go to the shops if you need to, and a coach will do that, but try to bring what you need, don't rely on buying things out there. Um, if you have a training dairy, bring it. If you have an SSC programme that you don't do with us, bring that and we'll facilitate you to get that done as well. Bring all your training shoes, even if you're a multi-eventer. I think some people said last year, oh, I just didn't bother with that set because I can't bring them all, so I'll just drop that event. Bring them all, find a way. If you wear weightlifting shoes at home, bring the weightlifting shoes. You don't want to start tweaking little variables that might have an impact. Um, European travel adapters, school books for study if you need them. Bursary athletes, you're all travelling from Belfast, okay, because most of you are adults and, and you can travel independently, so you're responsible for your own check in at the airport. Um, that means your boarding pass, so that means for international flights you upload your advanced passenger information, do that yourself, print out your boarding pass. What we'll do though, because there's still a large group of you going at the same time, we will make a time, because um, some of our coaches like Michael, uh, Lynn for example, will make a meeting time um, and we'll still have you all kind of collect together, go through the airport together, 
um, for social reasons as much as anything else, but you will be responsible for your own boarding pass, especially if you're late, there'll be no one waiting. Um, that's the point of being a senior athlete. Okay. Just on the return, the bus will bring you back. We'll, we'll update you on that, but the bus will bring you back from Dublin Airport to Belfast if you're, if you're on that Dublin departure. Um, bursary athletes will obviously return back and get picked up. Training plans, do you want to just chat about that, Tom? Yep, so we'll be sending out um, a document to personal coaches um, with a training template, and uh, some of you, uh, some of the st uh, staff coaches already have that and have filled that in. Um, you'll have coaches will have one week to complete that and return it to us. Um, it will mainly ask to list your athletes' key sessions and your approach to recovery. Um, that will be sent out to each event group lead which will be able to collate the information. So essentially what we're saying is we don't want 30 athletes doing 30 completely individualized training, otherwise that takes the kind of group training benefits out of it. So where possible, athletes will train with each other. Um, that it still enables the key sessions to be done, um, but uh, it's a bit more of a positive training environment in the same sense. Um, so yeah, so over the two weeks we're talking about three to six key sessions that are still going to be done but where possible that will be grouped together with event group athletes. Um, event leads will manage this on a master document uh, on Google Sheets which is a program we use a lot um, for daily delivery of these sessions. Uh, training times will be confirmed each evening um, uh, before at the athletes meeting so athletes know very clearly what's, what's happening for the next day. So just on those training leads then, just so you kind of know. Um, so Alan Kennedy will be leading a group of jumpers who are 18 plus. So that'll be Lydia, Mark, Jay and Caitlin. And I think Christian also uh, joins, Christian Robinson joins at a later date on that. Alistair Woods, who's here, will lead on middle distance. So uh, Dylan McBride, Murphy Miller, um, Hermione, Alex, Sorsha. Um, as we said, Alistair will be supported by Philip and Francis on that as well. Now, as much as possible, we know there's girls and boys there, and we know you'll have you'll not be used to training together. Things like easy runs, we can establish who's working at the same pace. Um, we can establish where you maybe need support of a coach on a bike, for example. There'll be ways of working together for certain bits. We maybe do some of our some of your flexibility, and there may be track sessions that do fit, even if you're not at the same pace. Um, so I'll have uh, James Wright, uh, Gareth Crawford, I can oversee as well. Jack McGee and. James on shot as well will be my four and throws. Ian Neely will be out there. Obviously, uh, Devisha and Craig are Commonwealth potential, so they've accelerated kind of through Youth Academy. Uh, but Ian will be out there, and Adam Hughes will join up with them for training. Adam McMullen uh, will have Lauren, who's also Commonwealth potential. Uh, Michael McCauley, Connor Crow, and Adam Sykes will work with in with that group as well. But you'll see there are other sprints groups then. Um, I'll go to the other sprints group first. So Amy will oversee Eve, Rachel and Katie um, being supported by Michael Roberts and Lynn for those athletes. If we look at multis then, so myself and Tom will kind of lead on some of the planning around multis but there'll be a heavy focus, especially for boys, on pole vault. Um, there's a chance to intensify your pole vault work. So Jim will play a strong part in the multis programme um, as well as Michael Curran. Um, so athletes in that group, Jordan, Naomi, Ethan, Molly and Emer. Um, individual pole vaulter then, Erin Fisher, also working with Jim. And then Adam McMullen, as well as having a speed group, will have a horizontal jump group. So on long and triple, uh, Johnny, Cameron, Joshua and Christian potentially. And he'll be supported by uh, Michelle, but also Amy and Lewis, because Adam has two groups there. So you want to make sure that the, the physical prep and warm ups and things are being well supported. Uh, by other coaches. So what, what you can expect is the master sheet training template that we have, you can expect that to come from your event lead because there's no point in all the communication coming back to me and Tom. Um, so you can expect, for example, let me see, pick an athlete. So Rachel McCann, you can expect that training template to go to, to Michael this week and that's where the, the main sessions will be documented and then Amy will be tasked with trying to figure out how Rachel can, can work in and tie in with Eve and Katie Monteith and some of the other sprinters. Okay, so all the coaches in the room will be in charge of getting this together and then we'll get onto a master document. 
<laughs> Sorry, Jim Alexander, we have you in twice, Jim. This Hi. one is Jim O'Neill. We've got two oh, Jims. <laughs> yeah, so Paul Bolton oh, and, multis and then well, multis Jim. and yeah. hurdles that Neymar is going to be uh, hurdling in with the multi eventers. <clears throat> Just the weather, obviously, we're two weeks away. It may well change. Uh, Tom screenshot of it there for you. You can see kind of in the 18, 19 range, little bits of rain. So the main advice is, of course, you're probably training shorts and t-shirt, but I would also bring a rain jacket and I'd expect to have to put a hoodie on if you're going to be outside in the evening. Um, long sleeve top and leggings can be good if you're prone to getting sunburned. Sometimes it's better just to put on the long sleeve stuff and not get yeah. sunburned. Okay, so. I mean, it'll feel hotter than that. It's gonna, if, it's, if it's 18, 19, 20, it's gonna feel probably more like 25 plus. Um, it might be cool at night times as well. So bear that in mind in terms of, packing um, but it can change very quickly so um, that's probably typical you might expect two or three days possibly of rain but it might, a day of rain might not mean a full day of rain it might mean a quick shower the sun back out again yeah it's a really casual hotel it will be mostly full of it'll be 90 percent athletes from all different countries and a few holiday makers you don't need you definitely don't need dresses you definitely don't need more than one pair of jeans um, most people are in t-shirt and shorts for dinner um, t-shirt and jeans for dinner at the most. Trainers don't think we'd any need for high heels or anything like that. There are no nights out, so pack wisely, pack your training gear, your equipment that you need. It's definitely a casual place to be. Uh, beware of drastic changes in normal football. Where a classic, even at the Commonwealth Games level, a classic is you go in because you're in a hotel surroundings and there are people on holidays, you think flip-flops, and when else would you ever wear flip-flops for two weeks and then before you know it you've got Achilles tendonitis or a sore big toe <coughs> and your feet are wrecked and you can't train and you're seeing the physio and we're telling you that's a waste of time because that's just because you're wearing flip-flops. Okay, So stick to your normal footwear um, even around the hotel. Simple things on camp, we'll use WhatsApp, um, so try to make sure you have WhatsApp downloaded on your phone. We want to have you all in a group, we'll not open it up too early and we don't want silly things on it, so we want to keep it nice and efficient so you can easily see when your meetings are, but all those numbers will go on a WhatsApp a few days out, we'll send you reminders and then we'll start it um, from the airport basically. We'll have a team meeting every night, it, that's just around logistics, so it's incredibly hard to plan for everyone to train every day if you're not all in the same room to find out when that training is going to happen and how it's going to fit around others. So we'll try to see you at half seven every night. It gives you a chance to have dinner before or after. Um, breakfast, I think we put meal times. This is from last year. Do you know what? Meal times are flexible to you as long as you're at your training. Um, you usually end up linking up for with your own roommate for meals or whatever. That'll be fine. Uh, just on lunch, we don't provide your lunch. That's as much social as anything. Um, we want people to be able to eat when they're comfortable to eat and with whom they want. You can typically eat probably a toasty over there for about three euros. You can probably get a, a hot meal for about seven euros a day. So that's the main source of pocket money that you would need would just be for your lunches. There is water and juice and stuff at all the meals. Um, so you'll be able to get that. We recommend purchase water though, because uh, the tap water in Portugal is not recommended for English travellers. British, so. Um, laundry we did, so there's, I think there's laundry machines in the hotel, but last time we did one laundry trip at the midway point, so if, if you want to, if it's easier just to pack for one week, and then on the Saturday night throw your laundry into the bin liner and it all will arrive back sometime on Sunday night, um, and be ready for training. So we'll facilitate that, Catherine will just take it all away and it will just come back. Um, that's how it happens at home as well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cash, just you're responsible for your own cash, so we wouldn't recommend you know bringing out loads of cash. There's a cash machine not too far away. Coaches can walk you down to that. Or you can get to that. So you don't want to have, you know, you don't want to have certainly more than a hundred euros floating around. That's not in a in a safe. So just be careful of your money and your your finances and stuff over there. Um, the Wi-Fi is pretty poor, just because there are I don't know a thousand athletes all your age all trying to get onto it at once. So. Um, I wouldn't plan too much for Wi-Fi if you've got study notes or online study type stuff. I try to have that either done or printed or whatever, and rely more on paper and pen um, for your study. Central Majority of under 18 athletes will only train once a day because that's what you do at home, and you'll have days off. So in terms of your study, that leaves many, many hours. Even if you're training between nine and twelve and having lunch, that means you're free from two o'clock until the evening meeting, which is probably not until seven. Um, and then you're free again after dinner. So if you need to study, even if it's three or five hours a day, you can get it done. It's just about how you manage your time um, and who you spend your time with and where you choose to do that study privately. So 
um, study won't be a problem. We don't plan to make anyone train twice a day if that's not what you do at home. Just Pastor Care, we already said this. We'll, we'll let you know who the first aiders are so that you can chat to them. Um, but Alistair is available, but you can, you can speak to any coach if you've got any worries or concerns. We don't want you to be homesick, so please don't disconnect from your family. Try and stay in touch with your family as well. Um, or if you're having trouble getting in touch or foot issues with your phone, we'll be able to facilitate that. Um, parents should also feel that they can contact us out there if you just want a simple update. We, you can contact us, we'll give you all the numbers before we go. So you contact the training lead or myself or Tom, there's no problem um, getting in touch. We are there to work a full day, so it won't be a hassle to us. Recreation, flexible lunch, the on-site activities that are there, don't go too mad. Um, it's a very strong sea current out there, that's worth saying. We'll remind athletes when we get there. Paddling maybe, but out for a swim in the sea in front of the hotel, definitely not recommended just because of the currents. So. Um, so maybe stick around the pool or just about you know, kind of walk on the beach or paddle, but that's about it. The last time we facilitated one trip in the middle just to get people away from site, so we took a group out in um, organised minibuses, collected us, and just people went to the Merida for mini golf or for a day out shopping um, on their day off. So we'll, we'll definitely have some activity planned um, and we'll let you know what that is and that will be optional. So staff will supervise that but also stay at the training site. Normally that ends up being on Easter Sunday. Um, just because it's it's a quieter training day and that's when people are ready. You'll have been there six or seven days, you'll be ready for a break. Turn travel, it's an early enough departure, so this is on Thursday the 25th. So half 11 flight, we'll probably be at the airport from half nine to get all the luggage on. You'll arrive back at half two, which is hopefully a nice comfortable time to get back and probably should be able to be picked up by parents around about half five at Mary Peter's track just to get you back to somewhere central where parents can pick you up. If there's any requests for anything outside of that, if you live closer to Dublin and you want to just get off there or whatever it might be, just communicate that with us. Questions, um, and then after questions, if we can just have the 18 or over, just and staff in the boardroom at the back, but everybody else after questions is completely free to leave. We will send out the PowerPoint um, so you can see the detail and check the detail um, just in your own time at home. Are there any questions at all? You mentioned uploading passport details by the 1st of April. Um, so whenever you would have paid your deposit on the online entry system, mm -hmm. I think you would have inputted the passport details already. Oh, just the number? Just the passport. Number and expiry date. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of people who just didn't, who managed to bypass that and didn't do it. And there are a couple of people who let us know they're getting new passports, but we might still be waiting on their details. But if you've done that, then, yeah. So a few people know that they're, who they are, who still need to do it. Yeah? Do you have a desk? Yeah, there is. There's like a large dresser with a seat of, yeah, there is. Don't know if there's two necessarily, but there'd be no shortage of seats. There's ba actually there's balcony seats and all that type of thing. There so are other options as well. There's there's, there's meeting, rooms er and meeting rooms and areas that there are other desks as well. So don't worry, we'll get you sorted. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Anything from parents or staff? Or anything any of the personal coaches want to say? Or just one thing around our therapists, we, to, to get the best from them. It's really important that if you've got a niggle at the moment or you're seeing a therapist, when we send you out those training templates, it's really important that you get back, okay? Share the details of who you're seeing at home, what is the nature of the injury, how long have you had it, what's the timeline, and how can you be supported out there to deal with that? So so try not to be turning up at a therapist said, oh, you're out in Portugal, but then you say, well, I've actually been seeing a physio for three months and it's about this, because we've lost the opportunity to, to get that information firsthand and to maybe make a call to your physio. So when the, the training sheets come out, um, make sure your coach is fully aware of any injuries or niggles going on.